And for more on this, let's bring in Sergeant Sean Larkin, a Tulsa police officer who helped organize their gang unit. He was also uh, featured in the featured analyst on A&E's live PD show. Thank you so much for joining us. Also joining us, Dr. Michael Bodden, the forensic pathologist who is also a Fox News contributor. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thanks. Sergeant Larkin, I want to ask you, you know, he admitted to killing all four. He gave the locations of all four. But when asked if they were all buried in the same hole, his attorney wouldn't answer. Why not? You know, uh, him, him giving the confession, um, he's obviously saving himself from the death penalty, as we've heard. Um, the attorney very well may know right now. From my understanding, some of the things I've read is maybe three of the bodies were actually in this mass grave, and another body is at another location. Um, probably waiting, the investigators, the DA, uh, the individuals in that position make that announcement. Dr. Bodden, one of your earliest cases, over 50 years ago, in fact, you would never know by looking at you, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Uh, was yeah. the discovery of a mafia burial ground in rural Pennsylvania, and you just have the most incredible stories, but this one uh, was uh, where several bodies were found buried, badly decomposed, um, which you know, draws some parallels here uh, because these four bodies that were discovered in this case also badly decomposed since we know that uh, the 20 year old who confessed Cosmo DiNardo actually burned the bodies before burying them. How do investigators examine evidence so badly decomposed? Well, firstly, the uh, going down 12 feet uh, helps preserve whatever the remains were. If, there were, uh, if the bodies were burned beforehand, there would be a burn pit also on the property that the police be looking for with evidence. And the bodies can be easily identified by teeth. The teeth do not uh, burn at uh, regular uh, temperatures. They sometimes can be destroyed in cremations, which are uh, twice as high a temperature as you can get uh, in the uh, uh, outside in, the, in a burn pit. But uh, the dentals, not only do you have to identify the bodies, easily done by dental if the bodies are burned, but also they have to de determine the cause of death. And that's where, just because he says he did it, they need some proof of it, and that would be finding the bullets involved, the, the whatever uh, entered the bodies. And that's why they have to be especially careful in mm -hmm. re removing everything from 12 feet down, and it takes more than one person to bury people 12 feet down from personal experience. Uh, so the bullets have to be recovered to confirm right. the, uh, the confession, and they'll okay. be easily identified. Sergeant Larkin, it does seem that there was a possible co-conspirator. Uh, you know, Dr. Bodden just pointed out that you do need more than one person to actually bury bodies this deep down. Um, what say you on exactly how this went down? We know the motive was drug-related, um, and Correct. it seems that this guy had an accomplice. Yeah, you know, if his accomplice, was this accomplice involved in actual murders themselves? Was the accomplice involved in helping, you know, dispose of the bodies, being burning it, helping them, uh, burying them underground, maybe even just disposing of evidence afterwards? So that, that's what I'm curious about is to know what the accomplice's role was in this. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to put somebody 12 feet down underground, um, I mean, it, it takes hours just to dig even a, a two or three foot hole. So I'm assuming there was some part of large machinery that was involved in this and whether or not he was able to do this by himself, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious. And Sergeant curious. Larkin, also, I just want to mention to this uh, point that a person actually spoke with the Associated Press on the condition of anonymity and saying that every death was related to a purported drug transaction. This is a quote. And at the end of each one, there's a killing. So this basically means that each person was killed one by one over a certain period of time, which we don't know at this point. Uh, this guy right. was once a suspect, in other words, which is what brought investigators to search his family's farm in the first place. So the question is, did investigators miss something? Could they have perhaps nailed this guy before he was able to kill two, three, four people? You know, I don't know about that. Um, you know, when, when he popped up as a suspect, you know, nowadays with cell phone technology, um, you know, I know one of the victim's cars was found on the family's property for the suspect. Um, I'm sure he quickly became a person of interest in this, but it's a matter of finding uh, those critical points of evidence that allows them to then come forward and make an arrest. And Dr. Bodden, you mentioned about uh, some of the bodies being inside a drum um, and that a co-conspirator had to have been involved, obviously. I mean, not only are you burning these bodies, but now you're loading them into a drum. Um, but does the drum perhaps, and this is a bit gruesome to think of, but that is your job, uh, yeah. protect the bodies from underground decomposition. Uh, uh, Julie, uh, the, the drums were used in the, in the incident you mentioned 
50 years ago when there was a mafia burial ground in Pennsylvania yeah. and the bodies were burned and put in drums. Here, it just sounds that they were burned in a, in a burn pit and then uh, buried. Now, whether they're two, three, or four bodies in that area will be found very quickly by the medical examiner and uh, from identifying how many different uh, skeletal remains there are, if they, they are skeletal remains, and the teeth. Uh, but uh, that information should be available in the next day or two. Right. Uh, All right. Dr. Bottom, thank you so much, and Sergeant Larkin for weighing in. What a sad story. Thank you, Julie.